So you can see an episode where this guy gets killed, and like three weeks later, you can see him show up for the first time. Well, one thing I didn't get, I wish yes, people, I wish people would get to, uh, was how by the mid '90s, more and more draconian limitations. Careful walking around the airport. Uh, the uh, were. Um, you know, being enforced through the FCC had taken effect. They had already been signed into law, but they were taking effect. And that was one of the many reasons why the big three threw up their hand. Also, a whole bunch of cable, cable TV shows. Right, isn't there an outfit on your own stage? Yeah. Uh, you know, so they didn't have to. Uh, and, you know, and also, in their new. Well, oh, I just don't think that's. Because FCC regulations are different. Well, uh, not all those ways. Not all these ways. I need some plug in this computer and get power supply a lot less restrictive. Hey, Ryan. Yes. Is there a plug up here that I can plug in the computer to? An outlet? Power outlet? Uh, let's take a look. I just like that. It's not a power outlet. Oh, so the other panels are going to have a power strip. Well, I call it like yeah, all the wire things. Use your phone. Oh. Plug in, plug in, plug in. Sounds like a hazard. Uh, <laughs> uh, Robert, to yeah, your left, see if there's one on the other side of the stairs. An outlet? Okay. Yeah. Because like, I was trying to follow the wires and then the wire to yeah, the wall. Yeah. 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 Whatever's behind that's that all switchable. Oh, right oh the wall opens up. Yeah. Uh, there is an open yeah. outlet. Can, can, uh, can your adapter reach? No, I don't think so. Wait. Oh, no, no, that's not going to make it. Wait, there's a extension. Yeah, that's not going to make it. Yeah, that's not going to make it. Okay, you know what? Hold on. Yeah, there's a floor I remember here. Hold on, let me get to my bag. I have, I, uh, I believe I have an extension cord. I can load it to you. All right, got if it. If I do. This is my first time trying to use the phone extension. I always have to use the phone extension. Well, the thing is, try it with the Oh, because you can probably put that up in the corner. All right, here, see if this is going to be enough. Oh, that's enough. Oh, you just screwed me. Yeah. You need another computer or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't care who's around. I need to go to the phone. I miss that. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, panel three, line three, had a, uh, a power strip under there. Yeah, you just won't know where there is. See, there is a power strip under the table. Well, the very challenge is you can see it. Yeah, it just doesn't reach far enough. Yeah, you can put it in your We'll put you outside. Okay. Well, uh, how much charge do you have today? Uh, let's see. I'm checking the percentage. It's going to be one hour. So, this, what, what do you have? 90%. Battery saver. Yeah. I think you'll probably be fine. You're, like, you're gonna, not going to be starting for another like 10 or 15 yeah. or 10 minutes. Yeah. So what I would say is, you already have all this stuff. Put your computer to sleep. Yeah. Give, uh, give it a couple minutes, minutes to charge. You know, while you can get as much charge as you can over there, because they're running a bunch of apps, and if you're also trying to connect with Wi Fi. Oh, no, no, we're not connected. We're not connected. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Right. We're going to. No, we're going to. I have to move airplane mode. There you go. Yeah. Yep. And uh, uh, I think I should go for it. I'll be fine, but you know, I would say you know, if you got five minutes, you know, plug there, plug yeah. in there for uh, just to give you, you know, a little boost. Yeah, sure. Get as much as you can, and then just oh, reach on up. Okay, great. Yeah, then reconnect when you uh, when you got. 
So, I mean, I, I did an hour and a half there. Yes. For, uh, and went from like about 95% uh, charge to, or 99 or 95% charge to 2%. Yeah. And that's an even older one. Oh, I see. So I think we can probably handle this. You're probably good, but uh, I prefer to edge. Yeah. How much charge do you have? Hmm? Uh, I, I'm down to 52%, but uh, I started about 98 or 99. Yeah. And that was for an hour and a half with uh, no amount of clips, but no other program running except for the media player. I messaged Mobile Tech and let's see if I can get my Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Oh, nice. We can count a couple or no? Oh, Sorry to ask. Blender and Blender is both on that. Because the I do I do this for the reason because every time I grab the handle, I was feeling like emotional and showing off my because of you know I've been trying to break that habit for years. I knew it too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Testing. There we go. Can you hear me good? Yep. Hi, bud. So folks, it, oh wow, that is really loud. <laughs> um, if at all possible, can we get you all to come from the back as close to the front as you're comfortable? Um, we're gonna try to make this as interactive and interesting as possible. So that includes crowd participation. Yes.
three friends convinced me to come, and I'm here, and I'm, we're paneling, and I want you to meet my guest. Hi, my name is Demetrius Holt. I'm also known as Hellspawn Cosplay, and this is my son Kawhi, and hopefully he won't be too interactive with you all, my three-year-old. But um, actually, this is my first, uh, or our first Zenkai Con as well. I'm glad that the dealer's room had the props that I need, uh, I swear. I'm trying to, I'm trying to put together an, an, uh, an Ichigo and his little one cosplay for, for later on this year. And, Finding a nice, sturdy Zangetsu was, was, was nice. So um, I want to thank you for the invitation, and uh, I just hope that I can add something of value to the, to the panel. I also want to thank all of you for coming in. Uh, this is also recorded on ZenkaiCon Online. I feel this is a very important topic. Actually, both mental health and bullying. So let's let's do this. Uh, before we get into this, I want to we want to. Uh, dedicate this presentation and panel to uh, to my two friends, Alex and Jennifer, both mentally struggled as they were victims of cyberbullying last year. Uh, the message here is you are not alone, you are valid, your life is precious, and your life matters. All right, whether it is your physical health, your mental health, your psychological health, whichever it is. All right, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. So mental health, uh, the microphone is uh, working. What comes to mind when you think of mental health? Sanity. Quality of life. Wait, go, what is it, I'm sorry? Um, autism. Okay. Yes. Stress. Stress. Anxiety. Anxiety, depression. Challenges. Challenges. Life challenges, especially. Yes. Life challenges. What else? Dealing with social issues. Dealing with social issues. It's a lot of it. Yeah. Dealing with micromanagement. Oh boy. <laughs> Dealing with micromanagement. That's a lot. So we're just peeling the onions one layer at a time. You think about it? No, I, <clears throat> I've, you know, to be honest with you, I have not really considered mental health to be uh, a subject for me to focus on until I got into cosplay. And I got into cosplay in 2017, and I started seeing the various degrees of people experiencing turmoil and just dealing with other people who just didn't happen to be them. And seeing how folks respond to certain stimuli is is both heartbreaking and interesting at the same time. So when I see or think of mental health, I, want, I just see like the entire spectrum of how people deal and respond to certain things and whether they're both mentally or emotionally intelligent enough to handle the things that they, they come across. So mental health is many things. So all of you are correct especially the micromanagement part. <laughs> so it's a part of everyone, just like uh, the physical health. And it's something to look after. It is complex, just like the micromanagement. It's very important. And also, it's something you can change. Actually, it's more complex than that. It requires some effort, which we will get into. However, what's really important, it's not a sign of weakness. And it's not all in your head, even though mental health is about your head, but mental health even though it starts in the head, also controls the body too. And you can't just snap out of it. It's not something that you go just like that, mm -hmm. especially if you deal with habits. And it's not, mental health is not a negative thing. Mental health is a status, basically. You can have negative mental health, you can have a positive one, you can have everything in between. And there's nothing to be ashamed of, okay? I just wanna say that this is a safe place to talk about your mental health. So don't be scared. We're not here to judge. And there's going to be some few participation there. So don't worry about it. It's more coming up. So let's dig into it. So it's a condition, a condition, the well-being of the mind, which includes emotional, psychological, social well-being. So you, you've hit the nail on the head. And it affects how we think, feel, and act. And you hear it, mind and body. So 
when you when you think a certain way, your body is going to act a certain way. So it takes two to tango, so to speak. So stress, someone said stress, relate to others, connect, it's connected to decision making. So as I said, connects to physical health. And like physical health, your decisions in the environment, what you're born with, also affects the mind. Mental illness. <laughs> I'm autistic. I was diagnosed at 17. Me too. Yes. Oh, yeah. I was diagnosed with a very yeah. I was diagnosed at yeah. five. <laughs> like, I was diagnosed at a story, I think. You know what to do, guys, right? <laughs> Let's prove them wrong. I also forgot, I forgot to put in the introduction. My actually, I actually got a doctorate 10 years ago. So I'm just letting you know, people with autism, people who are neurodivergent, people with any disorder, you got this. Right, Demetrius? Of course. You got this. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I've, I've been an advocate for people just doing what they want to do despite whatever stimuli that happens to be negative comes their way. So, yeah, I, I, am, I, am, I am all for it. I'm sorry. All right, so yeah, that's mental health. So thank you for the advocacy. All right, so it's a condition that involves the changes in emotion, thinking, and or behavior. And it's linked with distress and or problems functioning in social work and family activities. So it can have a lot of effect whether you're at home, whether you're at work, or whether you're outside of your, your social life as well. So the statistics, I'm not going to go into it. I, I really need people to understand that not only you're not alone, but this we have a lot of work to do. And it starts here, you know. I believe in each and every one of you to, to make a difference, okay? And it doesn't have to be a big difference. It starts with one person. If you are able to support one person and you make a big difference with that person, that's a big achievement. So I, I just want to empower all of you that, you know, we got a lot of work to do. And see, uh, one in 20 adults deal with mental illness. So 21% of adults and these, num these numbers are basically under, this is just reported. There's probably people with these kinds of issues and it's gone under the radar, so to speak. So it does, it does matter. And uh, so people who get treatment, 45% have mental illness, 66 of that percent have serious ones. So, and as you can see here, the reason why there's low numbers is because a lot of people are not sharing it. We need to encourage people to, to speak up. And when we encourage people to speak up, we save lives. So it has an effect, person, community, world, everything is it's all connected together. So the, the statistics are there. So the warning signs, so this is something to watch out for. So feeling sad, trying to, if someone wants, I had a person tell me I'm writing a goodbye letter. That scares me. If someone, you know, doesn't, is not interested in things they're used to, you know, if you see a weight loss or weight gain, drastic changes in mood, those kinds of things. Oops. Drug use, alcohol use, those kinds of things. Examples of mental illness. So, <laughs> there's depression, anxiety. You've seen a few, Demetrius, mm -hmm. so I got the autism in there. And how do you... Well, see, it, it's, in my experience, the, the examples of mental illness just comes as irregular behavior. You know, like, if you're paying attention to your friends, if you're someone, like, honestly, I, I've seen some of my friends go through things and I picked up on it when they changed their name on Facebook. You know, it's those subtle things. It's, you know, some people say that, oh, well, if, if, a, if a person cuts their hair, I'm like, no, it's the real subtle things. You know, from even from, from that to changing a profile picture to something that is less than them. You know, it's, 
I'm not asking, well, none of us are asking, or other person, none of us are asking for people to be everyone's keeper. But those folks that are really close to you and that you spend time with, that you know outside of social media, you know, those are, that's your inner circle. Those are your, that's your tribe. So it is your responsibility to keep an eye on them, you know, because none of us can complete the journey on our own. I've actually had a friend who, uh, who I went to cons with, but she's actually more, she's more close to two of my, two of my friends. And she was happy all the time. Then she committed suicide. So that was out of nowhere. I, I, I did not see that. Uh, I started feeling sad about it. I thought, have I done something wrong? And, you know, when it comes to these things, don't blame yourself. You know, don't, you know, when, when we get to the bullying part, I'll explain. That's, you know, it's, it's never your fault. You do the best you can with the cards you're dealt with. All right, so there's depression, anxiety, dementia, ADHD, schizophrenia, OCD, the eating disorders, personality disorders. Who watched Civil? I think it's a movie a long time ago. I've heard about it. Yeah, so this person, I think, was dissociative, or I forgot what it was, with multiple personality dis disorder. And then oh, there was schizophrenia? Yeah. Yes. I'll put out the category of schizophrenia, but that's his name. Yeah, it's okay. It's, yeah. That's what came to my mind. And then there's psychotic disorders. <laughs> All right, so if anyone wants to come up, if the mic is working. So I want to hear from you. What were your mental health experiences? Oh. Let's go ahead. Hello, and um, what's your name? My friends call me Marcy. Hi, Marcy. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Uh, uh, I wanted to share a little experience about the happened something that happened to me about uh, three, like three and a half, four years ago. Um, this was like after a con I went to back in like September 2019. Um, had a bunch of roommates out there that you know caused a lot of problems for me, and I tried to keep the peace. I went on about my business, went back home, and uh, everything seemed normal when I went back to work the next day until one thing after another, one thing after another, just started to like my world come came crashing down. Um, one of my coworkers caught poison ivy, and uh, I felt bad. I felt bad for him, and he was walking around with a limp, with swollen legs. My other coworker, his uh, apartment that weekend caught fire, and his uh, girlfriend died in the fire from smoke inhalation. And uh, from the uh, from the con, from my experience, um, one thing led one thing led to another. A bunch of bad feelings happened, and I. Um, I work. I work at. Uh, I work in Mannheim Auctions in Baltimore, in, their, in the Baltimore area. Um, I went down to the garages where I was inspecting one of my cars that I had to do, and I locked the garage doors. I turned on one of the cars and um, tried to get myself a carbon monoxide poisoning to slowly, you know, leave this earth. Um, but thankfully, uh, my uh, friend called me up, and she's basically saved my life, and she helped. She helped me get treatment. I felt lost. I felt um, like this. Like, what am I still here doing here? Why am I still here? What's my purpose of being here? And I got. I overcame this by getting the treatment that I really, I, I, I really needed. I got. I got admitted to a hospital. I went to some mental health programs, and that's something I'm still doing to this day. You know, because last year was a, also last year was a rough year for me. Uh, my mom had a stroke right around this time last year. Um, my best friend, one of my con buddies, died of a drug overdose from um, from heroin in DC. He used to go to cons with me a lot. I got COVID at the end of August, which turned into food poisoning. I lost one of my best friends uh, from, a, from, from a similar situation, all in the same year. And last year, like from 2019 up until last year, it was one of the, so those some of the hardest times of my life. But something something tells something told me to keep going. Uh, I got I got mental health doctors to um, to evaluate me every time. I have a therapist. I go to the gym at least like three or four times a week, and I have my support system. I have one of my friends back there. She's part of my support system, and uh, a lot of them are still here to this day, and they're still helping me out with anything I need and everything I need. 
Uh, I just want to give everyone a round of applause. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, man. Sorry? Good to see you, man. Good to yes. see you, man. I just want to say, I think you're the one of the most strongest people I know so far today. Because I, I don't know how, would, I, how I would survive it with a few deaths and so on. So I just want to say, I agree. Keep going, all right? You have a purpose. And I just gave you the purpose earlier. You can make a difference. So thank you for the story. Go ahead. Am I allowed to present a situation and then ask a question? Not something related to me. Something yeah, that's fine. So I have a decent sized uh, roster of friends at my high school. A lot of them have some uh, pretty bad mental health issues. One of them is named Pierce. Uh, <clears throat> they slash that, by the way. Um, geez, they're a nice person, but they keep talking about, oh yeah, I'm gonna uh, kill myself this weekend or something, but never does, and that really, she does it so much, and I've been friends with her ever since my freshman year, which was last year, and I'm just not sure what to do. Case in point, there was an incident a couple months back where I decided that I would brag about how my honors, my honors English teacher was making us read a comic book. Well, you're not taking honors English. And then, she, and then they said, well, at least their class doesn't make you want to end it all. Um, yeah, because she talks about ending it all pretty frequently. I'm not sure what I should do about that. What should I? What do you think? Well, it's natural to assume someone's just looking for some sort of attention when they say things on a consistent basis and don't, you know, go through with it. Because if they did go through with it, then that's kind of crappy because they went through with it. Um, the best thing that I would advise you to do is to just alert a, a counselor since you're in in their actual school you have some sort of structure you know just say like hey this person here is saying these types of things and I'm concerned for their their safety and just leave it at that and then let them take care of it from there because you are not a professional hopefully they are <laughs> yeah I, that's probably a good idea yeah that's you know cool. so I mean the, the only thing like say, if you're if, if these people are in your in, intermediate circle that's the best way that you can take care of them and to look out for them is if you get someone who's of a professional status to see what you may see. Yeah, uh, yeah, my school has a pretty good staff. They can help, help. Thank you. It's it's both. So be there for the person and also the with the professional. And, and, and just be sure to never ever diminish their feelings. You know, you you hear them; they're valid. You're just concerned that there's a frequency to what they're actually saying. Let's give another round of applause. One of my friends, yes, Steve. Yeah. All right, well, first of all, uh, thank you for uh, mm -hmm. allowing us the opportunity to um, come up and share our stories. But um, basically, my mental health experience is this happened um, yeah. most recently, about for the past. Uh, Two, it all started two months ago. Um, I was at my previous job, and uh, my supervisor I had was not very accommodating, and she was like a micromanager. Like she tends to um, micromanage basically every single thing I do, and that just caused so much stress. And not only that, it caused me to lose my lack of confidence and have a second guess every time, but it put me back into um, visiting mental health doctors and I had a hard time looking for them in that area and I, that puts so much stress on me. Like even when I call my health insurance, it's just um, not a whole lot of options in terms of which mental health doctor specializes the condition I was diagnosed. And now I am diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. I was diagnosed since I was 12 years old. And for a while, um, like ever since uh, I graduated high school and lived in adulthood, and then it didn't really have like a severe impact on me, but now it seems like it's, it's all coming back. So, but however, I mean, I would have disclosed uh, my disability and then of course request for accommodations, but the thing is I quit my job and now I got a brand new job and now I was able to overcome that by, you know, talking, my st telling my story to my friends and especially uh, my parents because they've been very supportive of me ever since my childhood and, you know, told me, um, it's time to move on. Um, they're 
there's better opportunities out there and just gotta find the right fit and that's a, that's definitely a I learned but but at the same time though it's a blessing that I find this new job it's much less stressful. There's no more sleepless nights, um, no more unexplained weight losses and no more having to wake up feeling all nauseous because of how stressful you are. Um, and I, I know it's nothing to do with cosplay, but this is basically an all the life lesson no that I would like to share with, with, with you all. So. All right. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. My other friend, Jay. Hey, everybody. What's going on? Can you hear me? Everybody yes. Me? Okay, okay. All I, I just wanted to just make a difference in this world, just try to put smiles on people's face. <laughs> because I don't believe like, laughter's the best medicine in the I'm so sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to talk right now. It's okay, it's okay. I know, I know. Well, uh, you're doing great. Thank you very much. The fact that you're showing up and you're talking in the microphone, that's yeah. a big step. <laughs> yes, it's exactly. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to get here. out of my car. Right? I love you. And I love everybody. <laughs> and, and, no, I just never felt love, this much love in my life, you know? I'm going to start crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, I, it, it's just, you know, the, it's just, I feel great. I feel amazing, you know? Great to know that, finally know that people care. There are people there who are with me, so just remember, if you ever feel alone, you're not. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Go ahead. I don't even know where to begin. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I guess I'll probably start way back a long time ago, um, back when I was still in elementary school and I actually got my uh, first autism diagnosis, uh, first of many mental illnesses that I'd be uh, diagnosed with. And uh, what, one thing eventually led to another and basically the best way that I can describe it is that not necessarily the teachers of the school, but the administration itself of my primary school practically bullied me into going to homeschooling because they basically weren't willing to accommodate me at all. Like we're we're talking, this is back in the mid two thousands, way before we really knew much about all this stuff. They should have fired them because they're not doing their jobs. One of them is one of those people is now actually, I believe, the assistant superintendent of the entire school district. <sighs> Sorry. Sorry that was for a little rant. That, that was. A, oh, oh, trust me, I can I can go on all day about that. The the I, I have a lot of gripes against my high school, but um, yeah, uh, the the administration was not accommodating to me whatsoever. Some of the teachers were great. I'll tell you some of the. Some of the individual teachers themselves, my third and fourth grade teachers were great, but fifth grade teachers also, whatever. I went into homeschooling for five years uh, before I ended up going back there. And uh, the, the last year of getting homeschooled ended up being, I would probably say my first really, really bad time with mental health. Because I lost both my grandmother and my grandfather both within a span of six months like both of them just gone like that one of them uh was from copd the other one was from lung cancer like literally back to back it just snapped the fingers and then six months later uh the trailer that they were living in burned down so it's just not only were they gone but all of the memories that that i had in that place just gone forever. Like it's just snap of the fingers and it was gone. And it really affected me. Getting through that tenth grade was really, really difficult for me. I, <laughs> I I'll be I'll be hundred percent honest. I completely shut down. I didn't do a single damn assignment for about two months. Uh, 
but I was able to get the wheels back on track. I was always able to find a way to push through. I was able to get through that, and we ended up making the decision that homeschooling probably wasn't going to be the best for me, so I'd go back to regular school for 11th and 12th grade, and that went okay. There were a couple things, but whatever. And then I would go off to college, and honestly, I'd be relatively okay at college. My, my four years at college, I, I did surprisingly well uh, out in uh, out in Williamsport. It was uh, great going out there, but there were still underlying issues that I just did not address. That I just I just did not come to terms with, and they just sat there brewing inside of me because. Uh, when I went off to college, I actually, that was basically my first time since like being in the third or fourth grade where I didn't have consistent counseling. So even though I was able to keep it together for the most part while I was at college, once I came home from college, once I graduated, uh, things started going downhill, mainly because, um, <clears throat> you know, it's kind of hard to get a job. <laughs> I couldn't find anything in my field. I applied for over a hundred jobs within my field. I didn't get a single call. Have you seen the inflation? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this this is still this is still pre-COVID, mind. Oh. Okay. Like I, I graduated in 2018, and I was searching all 2018, all 2019 for something. Nothing came up. Just 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 nothing. Uh, but I eventually got myself a job, at least not something in my field, but a job, and I was able to at least get by with that. And then COVID ended up happening, of course, a lockdown ended up going on, and I ended up getting really, really sick actually just before COVID, January 2020, like just before COVID took off, I got the flu horribly. I, I couldn't get out of that for a week, and I don't necessarily know what happened, but it was like after getting that sick, something triggered in my head. I don't know what it was. But I would just get, after that, at least weekly, if not like two or three times a week, where I just get these horrible, just awful, awful panic attacks. Just awful. Like, yeah, my, my entire body would be shaking. I couldn't move. It, it feels like that you're dying, essentially. Like, it just, it, and then, of course, when you're like that, that just triggers all of your stress and stuff that all goes up and it's just it's just a vicious cycle it's it's awful i wouldn't wish that on anyone and it was basically at that point where i'm like i need help i need help because i just couldn't do this so where are you are right, right now well i got the help that i need mm -hmm. it took a lot of different medications to finally figure out something that worked i'm a pharmacist <laughs> yeah it took it took a lot it, it took a lot, and just regular anxiety meds weren't really working for me. Um, now I'm on uh, mainly actually medications designed to help migraines, and they actually seem to be helping me quite a bit, uh, which is which is a very good thing. And and that's basically what's leading me to here is that now that I'm finally past my really really bad panic attack phase, which. Morbid, 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 morbid. Um, that's basically how I got here, and now I'm now I'm starting to think about stuff that has always been kind of under the radar, but I just haven't really thought about, like gender identity and whatnot. And that's why I'm dressed up as Leona West tonight, because uh, he's somebody from one of my favorite animes, Pretty Papa. That uh, when he goes into the idol world to perform, he actually ends up dressing up as a girl. And it's something that I was able to actually really relate to. I never really thought about it for a second, but when I thought about it, I'm like, you know what? That, that, that actually seems really cool. I'm sorry, I, I have a stupid question. What are your yeah. pronouns? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the cosplay? Oh. <laughs> I think you're spiking it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm the, the reason why is because I want to make sure I, I get the correct pronouns because I want to let you know that I love your cosplay. <laughs> yeah. So, 
one of my main reasons of coming here is actually to try to figure something like that out. Because I because I'll be honest with you, I, I mean I've always I've always gone by just male pronouns because okay. that's what I am. But I, you know, I there have been a couple of uh, online forums where I've gone by the female pronouns and it just it, it never bothered me. It never came as an epiphany I'm like, wow, this is so much better. But it's like Eh, I wouldn't mind it if someone called me girl. All right. Anyway, so for the next uh, two, we're going to keep it to about a minute or so because we have some more material to go, and we only have about an hour. So, sorry to rush you. Uh, so I will try to keep it as short as possible. Yes. Um. So this was when I think around the time that COVID happened, and I think what I realized. Uh, I'll go with you. Uh, what I realized was that there was a lot of, I think, trauma that I wasn't aware of. But there were seven family members that I lost due to COVID. It all within the span of 11 months. So you can imagine me, I'm going to, because some of the uh, family members were uh, like of the same family, and these were none of my immediate family members, thank goodness, but it was still a lot. Because I was having to go through a, probably just five or six different funerals within that span of time. And so I think a lot of what's happening, and maybe some of what's still happening, is I'm still kind of trying to make sense of how that has affected me. I think a lot of that and the stuff that's happened afterwards with you know, the work from home, with stuff that's happening, you know, home, you know, home that was a break in recently, well, not recently, six months ago, but there was really lots of stability. And that's what happened. This is my mental health. It's like it's like it doesn't seem stable sometimes. There's like very scattered thoughts. There's very there's a lot of like times where I can lose back to easily and me just really feeling like, what am I really doing? How are you feeling now? I'm feeling very good actually. <laughs> uh it's kind of, I'm feeling very, I think, just kind of stable and also just kind of feeling grounded. But I'm also very empathic. So I, I think there are times where I can take on a lot of people's like, energy, even when they're not aware. So sometimes it sucks because you end up with that yourself. And it's like, oh, I don't know why I'm going to be So just learning that, number one, that I needed the help because I think there are times where I'm like, oh, I'll be fine. I'm like, no, it's okay to need the help. And it's okay to not be okay. Yeah, I've always been said a lot. I'm going to say it again. It's okay to not be okay to... You know, accept that that is what you need. And so, overcoming that is number one. For me, being somewhere uh, with the help, the help that I need. Two, therapy. Thank God. <laughs> but dude, I had a therapist for I think about eight years. He's still a very like wonderful individual who helps me to really kind of try to make sense of the things that you know I've gone through, try to work through them now. I think in this sense of like, let's work through these things now. Okay. I don't want to talk about it so much more. I want to just work through these things so that we get back to this. So that's kind of how I sort of overcoming these things and working through these things. So, you know, and also the last thing, to kind of forgive myself for what I didn't know. Because I can beat myself up a lot about like, oh my God, I wish I knew this. I wish I knew this. How many people do that? I know there's a lot of Right. That's that's actually very important points. Yeah. It's okay not to be okay. You gotta forgive yourself. I also want yeah. to put in be thankful every morning. Mm -hmm. Say yes. you know I've made it. Yeah. You know yeah. it's hard. I, I may not be perfect, but tomorrow's a new yeah. day. We can take yeah. advantage of that. And congratulate yourself for it. Like oh yes, I saw from there. Oh, I found out about this. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Look at it. Oh, he said he wants to say hi to you. Oh, hi. Yeah, yeah. That is also wants to let him go. Yeah, uh, that's, that's okay. okay. We'll just keep it I'm to just, about a minute because we're going to... I'm going to get straight to the point, though. All right. So I went through some really hard things throughout my life that included just social, financial, work, and family. And just actually 11 years ago, I lost my best friend from high school to cancer. And I started to realize what made me happy as a kid. And that's when I got back into comic books, video games, and anime. And that's when I met up with this community and so many amazing people. 
And even though I was happy, I was still struggling with a lot of things. But now I'm actually good where I am because I love this community. I love the people that I'm friends with. I have an amazing career now and I just moved into my own place. So the message that I want to give to people is this. Yes, sometimes there are hardships in your life, especially like on the internet and in the cosplay community. But just know that there are people who are just in your shoes. And take this too with what my aunt says with a grain of salt. Your bottom is when you decide to stop digging. <laughs> I, I hope you know it makes it you know we learn from this and all that. So I, again, I truly appreciate it. So so improving your mental health. So what do you do to improve your mental health? <laughs> you know, um, it used to be just going to the gym, and it used to just like you know you sweat you sweat it out. You you have the time to think about it. But honestly, lately. Uh, in order to overcome whatever anxiety or whatever issues that are like plaguing me, I edit videos. You know, between CapCut and TikTok, it is it's therapeutic to place things in the order of what you want to see things, and then it gives you a break from the from what reality is. You know, so I've I, I've got a. Uh, <laughs> a myriad of drafts that I just don't post. <laughs> just because I needed to do something in order to just get my, you know, it was like it's like a, a digital fidget spinner. Get the juices going. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and then doing that helps create, you know, the at least for me, the, the cosplay creative process. So, you know, I've, I've been thinking about different things to do with him, things that are potty train accessible. <laughs> Can't do, you know, full on. Can't do full on like the uh, Zentai suits, like Spider Man stuff, without having to worry right. about, yeah. you know, having to go to the bathroom every like four minutes. He made it. <laughs> <laughs> he made it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I'm thinking of different things all the time, and being put in a, in a position to help others helps not really have to focus on my stuff. And sometimes being s distant from my my issues helps clear the clouds from what they are, you know, and I can come back with a fresh uh, set of eyes to deal with the problems that I may encounter. So, first thing is, motion is lotion. My mom told me that. <laughs> motion is lotion. So, exercise helps you keep a little younger, and then you, you, you slow down the aging process, in addition to helping your mind and your body and everything like that. So, the social part. Coming to cons, doing this right now improves my mental health. Seeing you, seeing all of you here, and yeah, hearing your stories, this is th this improves the mental health. And I hope you know. I hope you all, all your mental health are improved at this point. <laughs> I, I hope I've done something, you know. Uh, so that's actually a social and mental component to it. So and mindfulness. So when I was doing yoga. Uh, for some reason, when they were doing um, whatever it is, this was my um. <laughs> I'm so sorry if I made that loud noise. <laughs> that was me. So, oops. Yeah. I mean, it's important to have a rest too. Resting is also important for your mental health as well. And also the emotional part, which, um, sorry to put you in the spotlight, I, I think that was a big... Uh, I almost cried. So, you know, you think about the present moment, and you know, that, that I, 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 lost, I, I lost my words here. And I'm, I'm really, thank, again, thank you for uh, coming up. And it's okay. So, there's more stuff as well. So, mind and body, they're connected. You, you know, just because you don't see what's going on in mind doesn't mean it's not happening. So the exercise, organization, you've done a little bit of that, even though you've saved your drafts and all that. So, you know, that you do your TikToks and all that, there's a self-care, and also talking, what you just did. So, and yeah, I, I hope that's... Out of myself more. 
Little by little, yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Strange you should uh, men oh, are you pointing at me? Sorry. Uh repointing me. I see you oh, no, I was pointing to him. Oh, okay, I got Sorry, it. that's okay. So breathing. So doing the meditation, just slow oh. deep breaths, counting to ten. Some people count it backwards to ten. Writing things down. I write things down all the time. Challenges. So you do it on your own pace. So if you wanna for example, learning a new language. So I learned Spanish recently. I'm actually using it every day. So checking in with yourself. We're actually gonna talk about the buddy system later on. And also problem solving. All right, bullying. That's the next component of this. All right, who's been bullied? All of us. Basically all of us. All right, so what's one bullying that you got? Just keep it short. Go ahead. Well, let's just say all the above, and I'm not going to get it. It's okay. You, you don't... Go ahead. Wearing poor people clothes. Okay. I got bullied for being overweight. Yep, we're going to talk about that one. Being called fat. That's right. Being punished. Yep. You go ahead. I played Halo 3 as a 13-year-old. Yes, people get bullied there. Not right in the voice on social media. Sorry? Definitely. Big one. Oh, yeah. So, yes, go ahead. Or a big one. I got one. Go ahead. Guilt by association. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. no. Oh, yeah. Yes. Ever since I got into middle school, there's just been this entire me of my peers that just does not like me. I stay away from them, but. Oh, there is that. What you got is well, guess what? Who likes you now? Yeah, who likes you now? We all do. Yeah, they all do. Yeah, yeah but they're all gonna like you now. If they, if they turn to you. By the way, you get the last laugh, okay? It's not about them. It's about how you want to do it. So if there is a vibration that you want to get to, you go for it, okay? And whatever they say, that's on them. That's their issue. That's yeah. Exactly. It's like yeah. every bully is a coward. Focus. Right? That's a uh, not all bullies are cowards, though. Oh. Yeah, yeah some I mean, bullies just uh, like to be... It's open to interpretation. Yeah. A lot of times, there's always a little bit of that insecurity. Yeah. Yeah. So, what they're trying to do is they're trying to bring the up, down, so they can feel good about themselves. Yeah. But I think that's my opinion. But, uh, I was bullied when I was <laughs> That's none of their business. Yeah. I raise my hand all the time. I got bullied. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I've experienced a lot of work. Okay, okay. What, what, what these three interpretations goes on this interpretation of like manipulation too? Oh, yes. like on the next slideshow, issues of power, ongoing and repeated, and behaviors that can cause harm. Well, let yes. me let me jump in here real quick. And as a child, third or fourth grade. I used to get beat up for wearing X Men t shirts. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> wearing anything comics related in the 90s was not the, not the thing to do. Um, and as of recently, it's the character I might choose to cosplay. So, you know, you got some folks who wholeheartedly believe in the fandom or in the, in the fictional characters that if you cosplay that specific person, then that means that you take on their attributes, which is not anywhere the case you know you may identify with them you may not identify with them but you may like their look you may like the aesthetic you may like the power set it still is not an indictment on your character as a person and anyone who says otherwise is just someone who really needs attention themselves that's exactly right oh my god more applause <laughs> That's love right there, that positivity you see. Let's make it viral. Yes. What do you say? Okay. So, bullying. Sorry, we had to get to the down in the dumpsters, right? So, unjust behavior where one person or group of people deliberately intimidates, abuses, or coerces another person or group of people with the intent to harm, hurt, distress that person or a group of people physically or emotionally. So, it could be any of these things, what you just all said, physical, verbal, relational, social. We're going to talk a little bit about gatekeeping, uh, as well as damage to the property. It's, and as I said before, it's never the fault of the person who's getting on the receiving end. 
I know it's like a knee-jerk reaction to say, you know, maybe if I didn't act like this, I won't get bullied. How are you supposed to know? Right. <laughs> you know, don't, don't, uh, if, be yourself, all right? Be you. Because if you're, you're not being yourself, you're adding more stress and, you know, it's not going to help you in the long run. We actually have someone named George Santos. I don't know if you heard of George Santos. <laughs> I'm from I'm from New York City. He's actually from my area. <laughs> so you know, please don't lie. You know, when you're true to yourself, people will respect you. When you lie, there's only so much you can go. All right, but that's just my thing. All right. So risk factors of being bullied can vary a lot. What are some risk factors? Do you think they'll cause? Go ahead. So that's for the bullied. Um, what about, yeah, that's good. Okay, that's I, no, 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 you're good. Th those are good answers. You it can be bullied or the one who's bullying. Okay. Because both are in trouble. Yeah, yeah. See, they're not bullied or both in a sense. Yeah, that's I good. Know that you're both sides of the story, but the big question is which one's telling the truth? Exactly. Because yeah. it can be open to your interpretation. Exactly. So the bullied. It, it would be, for me, it was my eyes. Num that's number one. Number two, we're not going to go too, too far, my glasses. Number three, it could be skin color. All right. Number four, I'm a little chubby. I'm working on it. <laughs> and yeah, so yeah, fat, people fat shame also. And it could be anything that could make you look different, or it could be the views that you have or the things that you do, you know, you can, and also the, the for the bullier it would be how their upbringing is as well. So it's so many different factors. So you yes, go ahead. I've seen so many people get bullied for physical disabilities that are completely out of their control. That's exactly right. We got bullied for our own mental health as well. And this needs to stop. It's gonna start here. You got that? <laughs> We're gonna do it, right? Yes, good. So types of bullying, we're not gonna go too much into it. You already know the social bullying, the verbal, the physical, the cyber. There's a sexual part as well. And then there's racist, right, right, the racism one. It's all across the board. And a lot of them, they just merge together a lot. There's a lot of overlaps there. We're going to talk about bullying and cons. I've noticed it. I've seen it with my two friends who I've dedicated this uh, presentation to. We see a lot of discrimination, a lot of misogyny, homophobia, including the transphobia and the racism. This is not, when we go to cons, this is not what we're here for. I have to make this very clear. When we go to cons, we're here to to express our interests and to be with our friends. And it should be an inclusive, it should be inclusive to everybody. And for anyone who wants to try to be, try to be superior to this and try to be better than anyone, what are you doing here? This is for all of us. Anyway, sorry about that. That's just. And the next thing, people judging cosplays. I was Minato and I didn't put my contacts on. So I had brown eyes. Someone looked at me and said, you're not Minato, who cares? And also I forgot, what, any bullying uh, well, things that you've gone or you've seen? As a black nerd, as a blurred, I do experience, just like anybody else, the, the inherent racism of you can't be that character because you don't have the same skin tone as that character. I'm like, you know, it's, it's, it's the most basic argument that someone has when they say that something doesn't look right. Um, there really is no solution to the problem other than people will change in their mindset, but folks are inherently raised to have a level of hatred within them. You know, hatred isn't isn't something that's born into somebody, it's taught into someone. And there are pockets within the country that uh, 
that lean into it. Politicians lean into it. You know, it's they're they're figures of power that lean into it because it is a basic argument that everyone feels one way or another. So as far as I'm concerned, I I don't pay them any attention until they have the courage to say something to my face about it. You know, and then if that ever were to happen, um, <laughs> I am not my ancestor. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I I don't have an issue confronting them in the way with the same energy that they think that they may have, but I'm extra, but that's just me. Um, when it comes down to it, every one of you has every right to be who you want to be, how you want to be, when you want to be it, you know, and that's, that's what makes the world, that's what makes everyone kind of special, is that everyone's different. As soon as you start getting carbon copies of, of folks, the world becomes really gray, and it's not interesting, it's not fun, you know? It's not a place that anybody would want to live. So, in my opinion, you being who you are is what makes this place great, you know? So, the idea that you give folks the, um, the power, the, the leverage over you to make you feel a certain way, that's, that's, that's craziness. Because who are they when you are who you are and no one else can be you, you know? Like you're special, every single one of you, you know? And if, if I don't have, if I can say it to you personally, then I'm pretty sure you can say it to yourself in the mirror, you know? So that's the, that's the inherent message that I would like to bring to this entire panel that you are blurred and you are powerful or you are who you are and you always will be as powerful as you want to be. That's facts. Uh, just thought, I'm going to make this quick. Who's watched Fairly Odd Parents? There was an episode where I think Timmy went to the dentist and they were saying to Timmy, oh, the teeth sucks or the teeth is bad. And then he wished everyone to look exactly the same and they look like gray blocks. <laughs> you saw that one? They all look exactly the same, except they were different heights. The, yeah. the teeth are, they, I don't think they even have teeth. It was just mouths moving. <laughs> yes, that's, that's what I was thinking of. And when they were trying to look for Timmy, it was, that, it was a pink hat that they had, they had to put on. Because even though their voices are different, everyone looks exactly the same. They look like lots. <laughs> so the gates and click, uh, clicks and gatekeeping, so for those who don't know, a clique is a small group with shared interests that really don't allow others to join them. It's only like a specific kind of people. We got to stop that. We really got to stop that. Just because we lack a knowledge of something, all right, that doesn't mean you don't like it. If there's something that you like, then you can get involved with it. Does anyone watch every single anime in this world? Well, not every single anime, but you know, <laughs> Give me the receipts. <laughs> okay, okay, that's where I really Where's the evidence? Yeah. Are you saying that Are you tried to do, it, do every one of them? Or what? Bro, you you really tried tried one? Speculation, my guy. Okay. So, that I can believe. that's what I was about to say. So, I will say that none of us watch every single anime. If you do watch every single anime, there's probably a new anime coming tomorrow. So, you, that's, you know, it's just like saying you know every single guy, but you actually haven't met all the guys. <laughs> so, and also the gatekeeping part, which is connected. Yeah, some people do the gatekeeping just so they say, oh, you don't belong there. I, well, I choose this one. This, again, we gotta stop here. Alright, why don't we treat each other with love, respect, and decency? And we don't have to deal with these things. So questioning one's knowledge, fandom, and interest, again, a little connected to it, whether it's anime, movie, game. Do I know everything about My Hero Academia? I love cosplaying as Aizawa. I actually have not finished it. Okay. Yeah, just, I'm sorry. Oh, thank you very much. I love the anime, but just letting you know, I have a full-time job. Like, we all have lives, okay? Anime is something that helps me a lot, and you can't judge people just because they're a little behind, like myself. We're working on it. 
All right. If you know about everything, if you're an aficionado on My Hero Academia or whatever anime, great. Don't judge people who don't know as much as you do. All right. Instead, just have a conversation rather than just judging people. We can't have that here. So, and as, as you already know, bullying goes beyond pawns. For one of my friends, it went on Instagram, and it went on TikTok, and it went on Twitter, and she was going through mental health. I had to be there with her. She's one of the two who I dedicated. I got it. Yes. Oh, sorry. And as I said, pawns should never be a place for bullying. I, I know it's a... Uh, it's obvious this is very this is a very important thing to emphasize. It should be a safe place for everyone for all of us to enjoy and embrace our passions and interests. So bullying statistics, I won't go too much into it, but again, just like with the mental health, the statistics are it's just reported. And there's probably people who are bullied but they go underreported. So effects of bullying you already know the effects, suicide, drug abuse, homicide, depression, anxiety, mental health related issues, they're connected, that's why we do these things. So people get aggress aggressive, some people who get bullied also become bullies as well. So they're the worst bullies. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, yeah. They're the worst. So we gotta stop the cycle, all of us. You know, that's why I said in the earlier, in the beginning, we all have, have a difference to make, yeah. and I'm giving you the power <laughs> all right, to, to help improve other people. And if we keep doing this, we can make the cosplay community, the nerd community, the con community, basically the whole human community a great place for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's our goal. So effects of bullying can also lead to harm to self or other people. Early risky sexual activity, criminal activity, obviously criminal activity, and it's going to affect your overall health as well. So, both mood, moodiness, aggressiveness, and then there is a, you know, your productivity goes down. All right, victims go through all of that sadness, anxiety, can't sleep, maybe sleeping a lot, ap uh, changes in appetite, routine changes, etc. And then for bullies, you may get in trouble, you may get arrested. When I was in high school, we had a few people getting arrested. So, and all these other things. Bullying becomes the crime if a bully hands a, um, touches, touches someone inappropriately, physically assaults someone, harasses someone, or it makes violent death threats, making obscene, harassing phone calls, stalking someone, hate crimes. I had one person take a phone, uh, videotape me when I was walking in cosplay as Minato out of nowhere. Now I just brushed it off, but you know, this. I, I, now, in this case, you have to ask. You can't get into people's space without asking. Or be, you, have to, you have to respect people's space. Yeah. All right. Don't just take the photos just out of nowhere. And there's sexual exploitation, if there is engaging, and then there is hazing as well. So the warning signs which you talked about, so some people refusing to, to communicate, so self-harm, so missing, missing property, so appearing insecure, being alone, not wanting to do, not wanting to, you know, go with your friends, not wanting to go to school, not wanting to come home. So sadness, all these things. Low self-esteem, that's a big one. And as I said, mind-body connected, so when you're, going, when you're going through issues, it's also gonna affect your overall health. So, um, so let me jump yes. in real quick. Every one of those warning signs is very similar to someone who's actually suffering from depression. You know, so <clears throat> it is really difficult to discern when someone is being bullied versus when they're just having a low moment. And again, I need to implore upon you to pay attention to your tribe, you know, but of course, you know, the idea of being bullied is mean, means that there's a, uh, a mob or there is like a, an external element that's actually affecting that person and that's very visible. So if you're paying attention, if you see it yourself, then you should really check in on your friend.
Yep. Uh, there was one, I think, case. I think it was one of one of the audience members was talking about how a person, I think one of the friends wanted to kill, kept saying, I want to kill myself, I want to kill myself, that one. Even though the person keeps saying it hasn't done it, I would still monitor. So that's something I'm saying. We're going to get to the discussion later. I'm going to get into this. So how, how to react. So just as a summary, you have to go to, you know, this is for kids though, but um, ask your, Ask the person, you know, whatever messages they kept, stay calm, encourage the person to, to discuss the situation, but please have an open mind, okay? Don't just ask for it, all right? And reinforce that, that the bullying is wrong and develop a plan. All right, so if you suspect that your child is, that anyone's bullying, you have to address it. Very important. and. For, Provide opportunities how you can, um, this, you know, what's wrong, what, what you can do, what, you know, there's, there's better ways of doing things. You can't just bully just so you can feel better about yourself. So that's a summary there. So, as I said with the statistics that I just brushed over, bullying goes unreported. Some get ashamed, embarrassed that the bully has pointed out something they're insecure about, made them feel powerless. There's fear that the bully may retaliate. I think people call it snitching, and there's pressure from peers to remain quiet, to retain social standing, and concern that no one will believe them because they distrust, whether it's the school, whether it's the management for job, or maybe law enforcement, yeah. or they're worried that can be, they can be labeled, as I said, a snitch and just become a target for other bullies. So it doesn't matter. If your well-being is affected, you have to speak up, because if you're not going to speak up, who's going to speak up for you? What's going to happen to you if you don't speak up? You've got to speak up for yourself. Exactly. So you got to you got to say, you know what? My life matters. As I said in the very beginning in that dedication, your life matters. Yeah, just look in the mirror and just be like, it is what it is. Look at life and be like, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Some feel that they deserve it because it's a lack of self-deceiving. Exactly. No one deserves to be bullied. Exactly. All right, and you should. And I said, and I'm going to say this again: you should not be blaming. You should not be blaming yourself that you got bullied because you're not the one bullying yourself. If someone's bullying you, how does that make sense? So failure to recognize that they are being bullied if it's subtle, such as spreading rumors, ostracizing others, or sabotaging, sabotaging relationships. If you think it's bullying, it probably is. So it's better that you bring it up than not bring it up at all, because you can actually uncover things right away. As one friend of mine says, an ounce of a prevention is like a pound of a cure. And I believe that. An assumption that others expect them to deal with it on their own. Um, I got an issue with that. <laughs> All right, if you're able to deal with your own, great. But you shouldn't uh, feel pressured to do it on your own. You should always get help. Getting help is not weakness. Getting help is being smart. So, solutions. So I'm gonna make this quick. Educate yourselves and others, all right? And recognize the signs, as Demetrius says, all right? Look out for your friends and encouraged for those who are willing to discuss the situation. Again, to speak up. Talk to someone you trust, such as a therapist, as uh, one of the, one of the uh, audience members says. Maintain lines of communication, very important. Set positive relationships and have your support systems. My friends, my family, the cosplay community. <laughs> and set positive examples, which we will talk about in a little bit. If bullied, tell them to stop, get away, and if possible, report it. And positive reaffirmation, as I've said, like with you, you know, just uh, that everything's gonna be okay. And also, you know, when something is done, like an achievement, big or small, we have to emphasize that. That's the empowerment part. I'm here to, we're here to empower all of you to, to, make, a to make a difference. No pressure, don't worry. <laughs> Just uh, on your speed, you know? And hear them, the bully, out and validate their feelings, as he said. Emphasize that it's bullying is wrong, and it's also important to establish a safe and positive space. Uh, for my friend, 
I'm a, I'm a, I'm a safe space. I'm like a, mo a mobile safe space. <laughs> so boundaries. What do you know about boundaries? Why do we need boundaries? How do we do it? We have to draw the line. Draw that line. Draw the line. Draw the line. Get in their head. Check how they feel. Talk to them if they don't. If they want to talk about it, that's cool. If they don't, that's also cool. Just leave alone. Go to some space. That's right. So advocate yourself. Stand up for yourself. Don't let anyone take advantage of you. And what if I said, oh, I want you to dress up as this character. What do you say, yes or no? Why do we then? It's up to you. <laughs> you. Okay. By the way, the answer is there. Say no. <laughs> that, that is the, that is the appropriate <laughs> answer. That is the appropriate answer. <laughs> yes, the reason, the reason why I say that is because I actually have a friend who is being pressured to do everything just because a friend actually saved him for something. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. If that's where the boundaries are, okay. If you have no, if you have no boundaries, then how are you gonna, how, how are you gonna have, have a footing? You're just gonna go back and forth, back, and, and before you know it, you'll be broken into pieces. Oh yeah. We don't want that. Yes, go ahead. It's also important to have a boundary that you're actually just gonna act upon because I think we, and this is sort of not to. No, like, anyway, but like, a lot of us have to we have boundaries and then we're so across and we don't do anything, so it's like, oh man. Mm -hmm. So, set boundaries, you're gonna act upon it. So, they don't have to be like a big thing, just be small things for now. Mm -hmm. Practice. Exactly, practice. So, boundaries are not gonna be like really concrete right away. It just, over time, it gets, it gets stronger through practice. So, we got questions, right, Demetrius? So, well, we don't really have time. We're yeah, we're gonna, gonna, no, no, we're gonna, we're gonna do it like this, all right? So, Demetrius, uh, I, I wanna exchange phone numbers. What do you say? Um, do I know you? Yes or no? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it does not make me comfortable to do that at this time. So that would be a no. Oh, okay. it, it's, just, it's how you say things, not what you say, but how you say it. Can I touch your beard? No. Good. Uh, can I touch that cosplay? I like your hair. <laughs> What's your answer? Uh, go away. What is it? Go away. I, I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. Go away. Good, okay. Oh, yeah. Can I take a picture of this? No. I don't Good. Oh, I have a drink from the bar. No. 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 Thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One of my friends from Katsukan got roofied. Yeah. That, that yeah. Is, that's, that's how you get white. You're, pa you're, you're passing the test. I love it. Yeah, that's, that, that's how you end up in Malibu. I have a favor for you. What do you say? What is it? No. Good. No. no. At my work, I just say, it depends on the favor. <laughs> Uh, that's sort of where I was going. Good, that's fine. <laughs> but if it's someone who you've never met the person before, what do you say? No. No. What is it? I can't hear you. No. no. What? No. no. Good. I can't do that. <laughs> All right, that, I'll accept that too. So at least, so the buddy system, who has used the buddy system? I've used the buddy system on my last con for the first time. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll make that quick, so. <laughs> oh, okay. So, I'll make this quick. So, two people looking for each other and communicating. And you gotta know each other. And when we do separate, also keep them in contact, whether it's text message or Instagram or whatnot. Anyway, I wanna end this with, um, if you have a crisis or you think about ending your life, please call 988, all right? That's the, the suicide crisis lifeline. And I want to say sorry for going over time, but I really, really want to thank you for coming to this panel. I feel this was very, this was a, an amazing panel. I, I hope you had an amazing time as well. And let's make a difference. What do you think? Yes. 
Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry. But you did great. I, I, I didn't want to take care of it. I to share, you know. Yeah, I feel so bad, uh, you know. It's just a matter of